Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and this is Wednesday. And it's Wednesday, it's December the 11th, this will be our chart lesson for today. And today is one of those days that you hope you get in the market that you don't get very often, but when you get it, you better take advantage of it because you don't get a lot of trends like this. Uh, some really great moves. And I'm going to show you some stuff that hope you'll hopefully help you to know when it's time to enter. Um, what else? Somebody wrote to me today and uh, or yesterday, I can't remember, but they basically they were having a hard time determining if it's a trend or if it was a range day. And my response back was that uh, if you're struggling to determine if it's a trend or a range day, then then you got some work to do. Uh, I'm not trying to pick on that person, but you got some work to do. Uh, this is what a trend looks like. Look at the EMA; it's steadily down. It got a little flat in here, and you can see we had a little rally, and that's why. And then we finally worked below, and then started down again. This was the first break of this little channel, and then you got a couple of legs down really you got more than a couple of legs but you moved to a new low and then you've just kind of been flat since then um, uh, yesterday that's more what a range day looks like we were trending here you can see it straight down and then it was now the EMA won't be perfectly flat but you can see how prices are swinging to both sides of the EMA notice that that's what a, a range day looks that's usually your first clue that it's a range day is when prices are back and forth on both sides of the EMA. And this one had actually had a kind of downward you know, tint to it. Um, the bias was down because we've, you know, we're kind of making lower lows and lower highs. But you can have, even in a, you know, a downtrend, you can have an up move. And you got to draw your trend, you know, those trend lines. And here's another day. That's obvious. Look how prices are swinging to both sides of the EMA. Uh, for the most part, that's a range. But come back over here and look at this trend. Notice now that prices are mostly all below the EMA, all the way down. We got above it a little bit right there, but we were finally working our way back to the trend line. And uh, but for the most part, most all of your price action is below the EMA. And uh, if it was mostly all above, it'd be an uptrend. Go back and just see. Here's one look. You know, it started out kind of as a range day, and then it trended up. And notice how all your prices are above the EMA and that thing's pointing straight up. That's a trend. Um, so, again, we broke a little below there. But this is into the next day, and then it was headed up again. But when prices are swinging on both sides fairly consistently, that's usually the first indication it's a range day. Um, you're not continually making lower highs and lower lows or higher highs and higher lows if you're in an uptrend. So, uh, and you can, and, and make sure you understand this. You can have trends like this within a range, and even on range days like today, I mean trend days like today, you can have ranges within the trend. I mean, it, it, you get it all. It's just, it's just on a smaller scale. And you can see that. It's just a little trading range on a smaller scale. And uh, you had a little uptrend here on a smaller scale. And uh, so I hope that makes sense to you. I hope that helps some of you. But let's talk about the trades now. Uh, I'm a little uh, short on time today, so it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I'll explain the trades. But before I do that, you know, one of the questions I always get is people enter too early into, you know, on these kind of days. And it's like the question is usually, how do I know when the little correction is over? Well, you don't really, you just have to draw these little trend lines. This is the only one that didn't really give you a good clue that it was over. This one just took off. And uh, but look at this when you had this little trend working up, you got the break and a move to a new high, then a little trap and off it went. Um, this is the only one you didn't hear. You had a little trend working up, you got the break, a retest with a new high, and then it started down again. And then you got a little correction here. You got a little trend channel working up. You got a break and you got a retest, and all you got was a retest of the low because it couldn't get through the main trend line right there, and then it turned down again. Then you went into a little trading range. You broke out the top side and failed, then you broke out the bottom side and failed, and you came back, and really they were just trying to get it back over here to this uh, resistance area, and once it touched it, it was off to the races again. Uh, then you got another correction right here, and look, you got a little channel, clear channel, and then you got a break and a retest, and that same trap you had earlier, I mean, it's just a repeat of that right there. That's all that is. And remember about repeat patterns. 
Once you see them, they usually do the same thing the next time. Plus, it's a downtrend, and this is the first break of the main trend channel. And uh, so you're knowing you you got to understand we're probably going to make a new low. And we did that, and and you stay with the low until you know you can draw another trend line right here, and you just stay with this trend until you get a break and a retest again. And you know always verify, try to verify my channels to make sure they fit on both sides to make sure I've got it drawn right and that looks really good right there we had a little overshoot there and a little overshoot right there and otherwise it's all kind of within that little trend range there and then you, you didn't get a break until here so just stay with it um, but that's what you have to do and uh, there's really no other there's no other way around that but let's talk about the trades uh, these are, the, like I said, these are the kind of days you're just waiting on that you're hoping is going to happen, and uh, they don't happen very often, but when they do, you got to take advantage of them. So um, you've got a big sell-off here in the overnight. You may have had a little failed break lower, and you started rallying. This is just a little two-legged correction. Uh, there's leg one. Then you had your pullback right there in correction, and there's leg two, and you can see it missed a measured move by... It may be perfect. It may have missed it by a tick, but it looks like it's almost a perfect measured move to me. Um, maybe we missed it by a tick. Uh, so you got your two-legged, and, and then you actually had a second entry. Let me make it a little bigger. You actually had a second entry short right here, but you had these two overlapping, and this one couldn't break lower, and then you had another one. So you really didn't want to go short there, although you could have. Uh, it's a little risky because a lot of times what it'll do is it'll break lower and then it'll run up and it'll run the stops and then turn down or it might keep working higher. But you had the trend channel here in the break and the new high, but sometimes you'll make two legs up. So you, you're better off to wait for this one right here. And then even then, it's still a lot of overlap and this didn't close on its low. It, it didn't go any lower. So uh, I drew that one. You just about have to take that because it's a failed second entry long there. But um, but it's a little more aggressive because of the congestion there. So uh, I marked that one in green. But if you took either one of those, you were really okay. You're just a little more aggressive with them. Uh, the one to wait on was right here. Notice you got your new high. You're pulling back a first entry. Pulling back. So that's a second entry long in an uptrend that failed. Or really with a downward buy. So you're looking for reasons to get short. Uh, that's what you're waiting on. Um, and you got to think now, hey, we're probably going to get a leg like this. And uh, so that would be my first target right there, something like that, off of this high right here. And you can see we went a little bit lower before we bounced. And uh, But that's your failed second entry long that turned into a trap. Look how bearish that move is. Uh, it actually broke lower and turned back up a little bit, so you probably could have gotten on that limit order since there was a little overlap. I would have just put me a stop there. I wouldn't fool around with it. Uh, because you're looking for a move way down here, and look at it go, and it's a trap, and look at it go, and it's off to the races, and that one trade right there um, would have had, um, your runners were, would have survived, even on this one, I think your runners would survive, uh, it would have been 1802.75, yeah, so you would have had runners on either one of those, that you could ride all the way down here to, and you know you just copy this line and drag it down and um, and the reason I started the channel here you, you could have started it up here I think you could get to the same place but the downtrend really kind of started in here so either way you drew it I think you I just kind of moved it down um, once the closers were right there and we did have a little bit of an overshoot down here too um, so that's why I changed mine. I moved it down, and it did tend to fit better. I don't think I quite moved it. Well, I moved it right off those that last close right here, and you can see we just touched it there, and we couldn't quite get back, and we almost touched it there, so I just tightened it up a little bit. And it may be that I don't have it drawn quite steep enough or something. Um, that can affect it too. Um, it's hard to get your trend line perfect except after the fact. Um, Obviously, after the fact, you can sit here and draw it over and over till you get it perfect. But when you, you know, when it's in real time, 
you don't always have it perfect, but as long as you're close, you don't have to be perfect. You just have to be close. Um, so you're off to the races here off these first two trades. This was the first real correction, and this thing's really bearish here now. Uh, a real aggressive trader probably would have gone short below that real bearish reversal bar off the EMA. It's a first entry, so you really didn't get a second entry here, but you really tested that twice. You tested it once, you turned down, you came back, you, you went down and back again, and then you went back up, and so... You're kind of, it's kind of like a double test of it right there, but that's so bearish from reversal. Just put a stop right there and look at it go. Uh, you got plenty of room before you get back down to this low, and that's your main concern at that point. Uh, it's, it's almost usually better to wait on a second entry, and um, we didn't get one here. So if you didn't take this first one, but it is more aggressive to take that first one. And... Uh, there's another trade I'm going to talk about here in a minute. Uh, I'm trying to remember where it was. Um, trader asked me about earlier today. I think it was right here, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but a little more aggressive there. If you took it, great. If you didn't, no. You still should have had some runners going probably from down here. And it turned out we just kind of had a little median line in here. Just kind of a central point, and you'll see that sometimes. We had not seen it as much lately, but for a while there we were getting it pretty consistently. And uh, But I think we had one today. Then you're moving down, you got a new low, you come back. There's your first entry. I didn't mark it because, uh, you know, this one didn't go near as far as that. When you're starting, you got to figure you're going to get some kind of little correction here soon. And then you turn back up, and you get a second entry right here. Notice the new low, pull back first entry. Pull back second entry. Uh, this was the one I was actually wanting to talk about, but notice how this one, the second entry, took straight on off. The first entry, they ran the stops on it. Notice how that went one tick higher than that, and that's and that's the ES is famous for that. Happens over and over and over. They love so when you enter here, your stop has to go above this point. It can't go right on it. Um, at least one tick, but I like to use two ticks for this very reason right here because they know uh, when I say they don't, you know, the, the traders that can move the market, the smart traders, uh, whoever, I don't know who they are, but the people that control the market, the market itself, I don't know. Uh, it doesn't matter who they are, but I get that question a lot when I say they. But um, the market knows these stops are up here, and all they did was run it up there and chase in some longs trap they trapped in some longs right there and they traced all they chased all the shorts out and they let it go down again and uh and so that's what happens and so it's that's why it's a little more dangerous entering on a first entry um if you entered there you know i it's such a small bar you know give it an extra tick or two i usually give every move two ticks above the um above my signal bar, unless I just can't get in it with enough room to do that and stay within two points, then I may not. But uh, if you keep your stop too tight, um, to the couple that asked me this question, you're going to get stopped out, even on good trades. I mean, look how much further this went. And you you were, you were had a good entry right here. You just had your, you know, you just can't, you, you, you were better off to wait on this second entry. You entered here, uh, and you're, your bars were a little different. This was a red bar on yours, and it did have a tick here, and then this was a green bar, and you entered right here under this green bar, and you only it moved four ticks, and then it bounced on you. They ran your stop, and then it went right where you thought it was going to go. If you'd have entered below the, the red bar, which on your chart was like this bar, um, you'd have had enough to get out because it would have moved five ticks. I don't think mine even had five ticks if I entered there even there there would be 94 and a quarter and yeah you can see it was just enough so your bars were similar to mine they're just a di little different color uh, but your red bar was here and that's where you would have to enter you can't wait for this bar that actually had a green tint on yours to enter below it because it moved exactly four ticks bounced on you they ran your stop and then it and then they let it go right where they you thought it was going to go to begin with uh, but after a several moves down like that, you've got to be expecting them to come back to this trend line. And so you want a good setup here. 
And even this one wasn't a great setup, but with that little trap there and uh, this being a second entry with plenty of room to get out, you just about have to take that one. And, uh, and it moved on down easy. Uh, you could have ridden this down to here. They came back and got the, the you can see they came back and got the runners right there just to the tick because that's right where you would have entered. And they came right back to that same point. So, and that, and the market's famous for that. They don't. There's no freebies in the ES. This thing is so efficient. It's amazing how efficient this market is. But anyway, there's a turn down right there. There was a little bit of a. There's no close outside this little channel. Uh, if you move, even if you move it up there, it really never closed out. So, uh, that did turn down right off that trend line right there. Um, at the time, I had it a little bit higher for whatever reason, and we didn't quite touch it. And so, uh, and the fact that we don't have a break of this channel yet, uh, that's another concern. Um, at first, I, this might have got you here. At first, I had mine kind of drawn like that, and it looks like a little break and then a retest. And it is, and, but it's just a temporary one, and then it bounced here. So you, you ended up getting a little bit larger channel here. So I just erased that. And... Uh, you get a little larger channel and you don't get your break here and look at that retest. It couldn't go much higher because it turns out that's the trend line. It, you know, th there's too much resistance there because of this larger trend line. And, and most people, I'm sure a lot of uh, more aggressive traders probably entered right there. And if you entered there, that's great. I didn't even draw it green because I just think it was a little risky. Uh, wait on this second entry right here. Because uh, now you've got the break of this little channel, a retest, a perfect retest of that line, and then it turns down, and it's off to the races again. And guess what? Any runners were safe here yet again. And you actually had a failed second entry long here, but you can see that congestion right there, and you can notice that we're not going so far each time, so it's a little too risky to be going short right there, in my opinion. Um, it's just too close right here. If you took it, you still would have been all right as long as you kept your stop above that, and that's that's what I'm always talk. That's what I'm talking about as far as this up here. You got to keep your stop in the proper place. You got to use the price structure, because look, they came back there, they came back there, and they came back there, and, and each one they couldn't make, they couldn't get higher than those last swing highs, and that's why we use those because they help protect your stop. And even this one was a little aggressive. There was actually off this. There's a new low right here. Notice a first entry, pullback, and a second entry. But now you've got all that. This it looked like we were really finding a bottom here, and it looked kind of like a trading range. And so you could have gone short there, and it would have worked. So if you did, you're okay. But once you realized you were in this, I would have probably exited and taken what I could get, and wait on a better setup. And so you finally got to turn down off the the trend line again right here after a failed break lower. Notice you failed higher. You finally failed out the low side about a measured move. You came back up, and you bounced, turned down right off that top. And so I would have used a limit order here, and it would have gotten filled if you entered this one. This one's a little more aggressive. You're better off to wait on the breakout pullback short. Notice we went lower again, pulled back, and turned down. And uh, even then, it was a little, um, a lot of overlap and stuff, but. You figured you're on, you should get at least a measured move equal to this, and so that's going to put it right down in here. And again, I probably would have used a limit order right there if you, you know, um, even if you use a stop, it worked. Um, and your runners could have ridden it down to here, but then it, it's, you know, you can tell we're getting ready for a correction. Notice how this is one, you know, we're not coming all the way down here. Each one's getting a little more to the left, the, the momentum's waning here, and that's another reason to be real careful in here, and maybe even here too, and you finally go on down, but now you get your break, here's another one of those first entries, and uh, notice that there's no break of this little channel right here yet, uh, originally I had it like that right there, and that's probably right, I moved it down a little bit when this one formed, but notice there's no close out up until right here, and then you run up, you make a new high, and then you make that one more attempt high. You really could have gone short right there if it would have broke lower, but it didn't. It went higher, and it gives you the trap right there. And it's a repeat pattern of that right there. Uh, and then off to the races it goes. Quick, easy trade. And then guess what? You go back into another little thing similar to this. You get a breakout right here. 
this one gives you a chance to get short at the very high of the range on a on a downtrend day. You don't want to be buying any of this because it's too big of a downtrend. So you can you're only interested in selling. Don't be buying because you'll get trapped. And uh, and it turns down. And guess what? Runners were safe, and you could have ridden this all the way down to the very bottom. Uh, really, on both of these. Actually, no, I take that back. This other one did not. You didn't have a runner on this one, I don't think. I think this is the one. No, you would, your runner would have been safe on that one, too. So you would have had runners off either one of those. And then there's a breakout pullback short here. It's getting real late in the day, and that's the reason I didn't mark anything else. Uh, there's your breakout pullback short right there. Uh, so another chance to get in right there, and it's really kind of a second entry pull back there's a new low pull back first entry and then it kind of makes it a little higher high and so it's similar to a second entry it's kind of congestive looking but you know why because it's trying to go higher and it's finding resistance there and then finally they can't get it up and they give up and off it goes um, he probably would have even had a runner right there as well and so that's what I saw today. It, you know, like I said, it just doesn't get much better than days like this. On days like this, you got to get on with the trend and try to stay on, try to hold some runners if you can, uh, because that makes up for a lot of little small losses. A few runners can really change your profit potential and your profit, uh, you know, your in-game profits. So you get a day like today where you catch a runner and you can and you let it go, and you get eight or ten points out of it well that makes up for three or four little losers along the way and may cancel out the only losers you have and then you're all profitable so keep that in mind you know days like this is where if you don't if you're normally just scalping out which you got to be pretty good just to scalp out and not use runners uh, but it can be done so you know I know you know I do it a lot myself just scalp out but uh, if you're having trouble being profitable with that th when you get a day like this hold on to your runners because you'd be surprised especially the ones that come off the EMA or the trend line and things like that because that's where the best trades are generated at and that's where usually you get the runners at you notice the runners were usually the good ones were right off this resistance area so keep that in mind but I'm gonna wrap it up I hope you had a good trading day I hope that I answered some of the questions from some of you that sent me some stuff today um, but anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.